All right, so when we get to a particular gauge, um, we can scroll down and we can see it's taken us to the current slash historical observations to start with. And that's because we said we were interested in current conditions. Um, so we can see now from this landing page that they measure discharge or stream flow, gauge height or water depth, and turbidity, which is a measure of how muddy the water is. But we can also see when the available data is. So gauge height and discharge, they've been measuring since 2012. Turbidity as well, but they appear to have stopped that last November. Maybe that's a seasonal measurement. We can also see the output formats here, um, and then ways to select what date ranges we're interested in. So let's keep scrolling down. Okay, so this is discharge. Notice that we are looking at US government data, so it's gonna be English units, cubic feet per second. And our most recent value that the gauge has reported out is 1240 cubic feet per second. And here's what time it was. Yes, it's very early in the morning. And we can see the discharge data for the last seven days here. So that's this blue line. This gauge is probably measuring every 15 minutes or so, maybe every 30 minutes. So they're not noting individual measurements on this gauge. They are instead um, just showing the, the line connecting the data. These triangles are the median daily flow. Uh, so that's uh, if you took all the days in the record for this gauge, uh, all the days of April 13th, and you found the median, you would plot it at this triangle. Now this record isn't very long. Remember we said it started in 2012. So down here they remind you that that median daily flow is based on seven years of data. And what we can see in this graph is that in the last seven days, the Cuyahoga River has been performing eh, around the median um, based on the last seven years of record. Another thing to draw your attention to on this graph is that this is a log axis. So we're starting at 500 and then each of these bars or lines here is going up by 100 cubic feet per second. Once we get to 1,000, uh, our lines go up by 1,000 cubic feet per second. And if we get, um, we're up to 10,000 here, then we'd probably switch to lines at 10,000, 20,000. And this is a great way of showing data that varies by orders of magnitude, by factors of 10 over time. Um, and so we can really see the high flows, but we can also see the low flows in this data. All right, let's keep scrolling down. So here's another way of just sort of saying where are we at right now relative to normal. So in the seven years of data on April 13th, our minimum was last year in 2019 at 698 cubic feet per second. One quarter of years of April 13th data come in at 1070. We're at 1240. That's a little bit below the mean, a little bit below the median, definitely below the 75th percentile. And now we can see that for this day in the seven years that we have record for, the highest flow was in 2016 at just over 2,000 cubic feet per second. By the way, the lingo for cubic feet per second is CFS. All right, let's keep scrolling down. Now we can see the same information here in, uh, but expressed as gauge height or stage. So again, where we saw high flows before, now we're seeing a high stage. We can see that stage is going up from say four and a quarter feet to just over nine feet and then dropping back down. Now, of course, stage is the thing that the gauge is actually measuring and it's converting to discharge via a reading curve. So it's nice to be able to say this actual measurement here. Um, the other thing that stage, of course, is useful for is if you are interested in flooding in the area and when certain roads are gonna be closed, then uh, stage is the thing you are interested in. But in hydrology, when we're trying to think about 
fluxes and volumes and amount of stream flow. We're usually more interested in these discharge values here um, because they don't depend on the shape of the channel and the floodplain in the way that the gauge height does. This is just telling us the volume of water going past the gauge every second. Okay, so that's a tour of the current conditions page for a stream gauge. Um, you might be thinking, okay, this is all fine and good, but where the heck is JATE? Um, a clue here is that it's in the, its funding is provided by the Park Service, but let's go look at some of the other information that's available about this gauge. So let's jump up to the location map, show you where we're at. Okay, so we are in Ohio on the Cuyahoga River. We're in Summit County. We can get the latitude, the longitude, the drainage area. Gauge datum is the elevation. Notice those are both in English units. And oh, we can get a map here and we can see what is going on. So J is north of the turnpike. And if we zoom in, we can see where it is. So um, for context, this is the Brandywine Ski Area and Brandywine Creek coming in here. It's a very low-lying bridge over the Cuyahoga River. A park headquarters are about right here. Okay, so now we have a picture of where we are on the Cuyahoga River. We're between Cleveland up here and Akron down here in the middle of the National Park. What else can we find from this website? Let's go up to the summary of all available data. Okay, that gives us some basic information about the gauge again. We can link directly to those current and historical observations where we just spent some time. We can also see daily data. Remember that the gauge is recording in 15 minute increments, but that may be too much data for what we're trying to do if we're trying to get a big picture over a period of months or years. So what if we just took the average daily stream flow? That's what we'd see under this daily data tab. If we're interested in those daily statistics, again, how much was measured on April 13th on average in a given year, we can see that. We can see monthly statistics, annual statistics, uh, peak stream flow, so that's the highest discharge measured each uh, year. The field measurements, so when were USGS technicians actually out in the field, any water quality samples that they've taken, and a water year summary. So these are kind of a holdover from when we used to get the data in big paper books, which was fun, um, but you can see here a little bit more information about how well the USGS thinks they've done in capturing the data. So if we go down to, um, there's the location again, the drainage area, period of record, how they're measuring stage. And then they give us information about the, the quality of the surface water records. So here, discharge records fair, except for estimated daily discharges, which are poor. We'll come back and we'll talk about those estimated daily discharges. And then they kind of go through and break it out by each year. Sometimes here under surface water records, they will talk about important things like whether the discharge is affected by a dam, whether it's affected by ice jams. Um, so you, it's always good to come to this water year summary and look and see what additional information you might find out about uh, your gauging location here. So let's go back up to the daily data because this is one of the main things we're going to spend time looking at. Right. It looks very similar to the current and historical data, but now we're only going to get one point for each day. So we can control what variables we're interested in. So we just really want discharge here. Um, and we can see... So let's just hit go and update that. So we're only looking at the discharge graph. So here is our discharge data for the past 365 days for the Cuyahoga River at Jate. 
So we can see it was pretty wet last spring, really wet last June. My goodness, it was wet. And then it finally dried out. But now we're heading back towards wet levels into the spring. Something else to notice in this graph is the green bar down at the bottom, right? So this is the period of approved data. This means that USGS hydrologists have gone back through all of the raw data, all of the records from the gauge and their field measurements, and they are signing off on it. And they are saying, we've made any corrections we need to make. We feel really good about these numbers. We are going to publish them. But notice that sometime in March here, we're into a period of provisional data. And that means that maybe they haven't finished their quality control on this record and so sort of these numbers are subject to change. We're putting them up here right now because it's important to know what's happening in recent days, weeks, and months on the stream, but uh, as they do more analysis of the data, they may actually revise these numbers. All right, so there's our graph. Um, we can change things, uh, including the date that we're interested in. So let's say we're interested in not just the last 365 days, but let's look at the uh, a couple of water years here. So remember that a water year starts on October 1st of the preceding year. So let's go to water year 2015. That starts October 1st, 2014. And then let's run up through water year 2017. So that's going to end in 2017 on September 30th. We want to update our graph, so we'll hit go. All right, so this is what our data looks like. Notice that it's all approved, but now we see a new feature. Um, we can see some of those seasonal cycles there. Um, notice that most of the data is blue, so that's flagged daily mean discharge. That's what we're interested in. But we have these short periods in 2015, here and here, where we have an estimated daily mean discharge. Now that means that there was some sort of problem affecting the stream gauge and they weren't able to get direct measurements during that time period. Uh, this could be some sort of mechanical or electronic malfunction with the gauge. It could have been damaged in a flood. There could have been ice obstructing the gauge. Now, these measurements seem to be uh, in the spring and summer. Uh, so it's, it's probably not ice. Uh, maybe, maybe some ice early in the record. But in any case, we don't really know here without digging into it. But we can see that we have some estimated data in there. All right, so now we want to actually download the data. Uh, so we're going to go up to the output format again, and let's click on tab separated data. Let's tab download the tab separated data for this period of record. We'll click go. All right, so it looks like this. Let's say you want to get this data out of here into something like Excel, someplace that's useful. What you want to do, uh, so I'm in Chrome, and so I'm just going to right click and um, go to Save As. Notice that it's naming the file DV. That may not be what you want to name your file. So I'm going to rename it Jate 2015 to 2017. Oh, I can't type. Let me fix that. Okay. And notice that it's saving it as a text file. Let's hit save. In a future video, I will cover how to get um, the data out of that text file and into Excel. But for now, you've seen how to save the data from the USGS website.